Distributed tracing, why do we even need it? Well, because we invented microservices, exactly. So let's look at this graph. Imagine we had only one monolithic application here. Our backend would be a monolith. All the requests would come into it, let's say this one, and we would have a very easy time debugging if something went wrong because the metrics are there, the logs are there. But with microservices, this is much more difficult because we have too many dependencies because the gateway is in fact, well, this incoming request is gonna get routed to two different services, service A, service B. Service A is in fact gonna get even two requests, the yellow and the green one. And service A is also going to later contact another service N. So you get the idea. There are a lot of chained dependencies. Now, what happens if the service N goes down? Do we have to log into each service separately to kind of look at the logs and understand what's happening? Is there maybe one central way to do this? Probably, but imagine another scenario. What if service N did not fail, but it has some performance issue, right? So performance issue means that the request that's later going to be sent back all the way to the client is gonna have some delay, some performance issue. And how do we know which service caused this issue? Because this for us as a developer is basically a black box, especially if we have way many, way too many services, if we are a large company, how can we track all of this? Well, tracking is basically tracing. And in terms of microservices, where we have many dependencies and where many places where to trace that, this is called distributed tracing. Basically finding out which microservice is causing the delay or performance issue or which microservice is actually um, emitting an error. And how do we do that? Well, Datadog has a really good uh, graph here basically to understand it. So we see that the API basically receives the very first call from the user, and this is the authentication API. And later it sends it to a fraud check. The fraud check sends it to apply coupon. And in parallel, we also have another function, meaning it's actually running inside the apply coupon service. We have one function here, process coupon, and then we make a database query, okay? This is all happening inside the apply coupon service. Now, I also put these two guys here, trace ID and span ID. These are very crucial things in the world of distributed tracing, because every time a request is coming into our gateway, meaning our entry point, a trace ID is going to be assigned to this request. So this purple line is gonna have a trace ID and wherever it goes through the system, right? This, let's say this purple line is eventually gonna end up at service E. It's gonna carry this trace ID with itself. It's gonna pass it through headers under the hood of the framework that you use. And eventually even service N is gonna know that, well, this actually initiated all the way here and it initiated from this particular request. It means we can actually trace this single request across the whole structure or across the whole architecture. And span IDs, span IDs are gonna get created for these particular connections. So for this one, it's gonna have its own span ID because this is a request within the system. And this one is also gonna have its span ID. Basically span IDs are gonna be applied to every internal request. So you get the idea. One trace ID for the whole chain and span ID, which is actually the smaller chunks of these requests within the system. Well, there's gonna be one parent span ID. For example, in this case, the apply coupon is gonna have, is gonna be the parent and the process coupon is gonna be the child span IDs because these are basically running within this span ID. And you can see that all of them have the same trace ID as I indicated earlier, all right? Now, there are many tools to do to check distributed tracing, okay? Now, there are many tools to actually do distributed tracing. There's Jaeger, there's Zipkin. I kind of like Zipkin, so I'm gonna demonstrate how exactly it's working. To make Zipkin work, you actually need to start a Docker container. To start this Zipkin Docker container, very easy. You just go to Docker Hub, you pull their image, you expose the needed ports, and then you're good to go. So the port that you're gonna target this time is 
9411, which is the default port. All right. And now I actually have Zipkin running here. As you can see, my container is running and the image is also running. The ports are exposed, meaning if my, in my browser, I can actually open Zipkin. All right. What also we're going to be using in our example in, in a minute, I'm going to show you the code and how exactly it works. I just want to say mention that our Zipkin is going to be connected to a tool called Open Telemetry, basically a way of standardizing observability, the three pillars of observability, metrics, logging and tracing. I'm going to talk exactly about this in the next video. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss it. Then you're going to have a complete picture. But what I'm saying is we're going to tie Zipkin into open telemetry so that our data is much cleaner and easy to process. And later we have Zipkin UI to actually see this. It's going to be much clearer as soon as you watch the code now and you watch the next video, I promise. But before we dive into the code, because in the code we have the gateway, which is the AppTS. We have service A and service B, just like in a diagram. And we have some additional function um, code like instrumentation and TS config. Well, duh, we're using TypeScript. I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squish. What is cool about Squish, you may ask? Well, Squish provides an efficient and agile automated GUI testing with multi toolkit applications. It has a ton of powerful features that can tackle any testing challenges you might have. But some that I found the most beneficial are, for example, recording and playback. You can record, edit and execute tests with Squish without a steep learning curve. It's very intuitive. The tool also offers extensive integration options. It's fully compatible with CI, CD systems and version control, streamlining your workflow for rapid deployment. Another example for its versatility is that it's available in whichever scripting language you use. And it's especially good at testing applications on multiple different platforms. Whether you're working with Java, Windows or anything else, Squish has you covered with powerful property-based support. There are a lot of materials on Squish online, but I'd actually recommend trying out this interactive tour so you can see firsthand how it exactly works. You really get a good general idea and feel of the tool. If you want to support my channel, then make sure to check out today's sponsor. You will find the link to the tour in the video description below. So go try it out and let me know what you think. And now back to the video. So as I promised, we're going to take a look at our gateway. So our application is very simple. Okay, our gateway is literally exposing um, a roll dice endpoint. And this is a Node Express application. Obviously, you can use any other framework or language, Java, Elixir, whatever you have there. So the roll dice is in fact going to make two requests in parallel. So promise.all, we're going to call the service A, which is running under this port. And we're going to also query service B, which is running under this port. And later we're going to send back, actually, these are don't even matter. We're just making this for sake of this tutorial, we're later going to send some number that's stringified back to the client. And this number is coming from this function. All right, service A, very easy, exposing its API endpoint, getting some random number, sending it back, which we don't do anything with. And service B, same story. Now we also have this file called instrumentation. And this is where the magic is happening. So we're importing a lot of packages here, open telemetry SDK node, we also use also auto instrumentation for node, which makes our life much easier when setting up open telemetry. And we also use open telemetry library for specifically for Zipkin, which lets us later use this distributed tracing exactly for us. And we de define our Zipkin exporter, meaning we can define our service name and where this is all going to show up as spent. Again, as I said, more on that in the next video. Now, let me start our services now. So I'm going to go here. So here I have the service A. And notice I'm also giving a name to our service by declaring this global variable OTEL stands for open telemetry service name. Um, and I'm using TypeScript to run this service A and I'm also requiring this instrumentation TS so that it makes sure that the instrumentation TS 
is run before it. So service A has started. Now we do the same for service B and we're gonna do the same for FTS, which is the gateway. Okay, now all of our three services are running. What I'm gonna do is make a simple HTTP call to the gateway called Roll Dice and I'm sending a request. Okay, so now we got an answer, 200, everything looks good. Now, how do we see our traces? Well, we're gonna go back to Zipkin. We can actually add some filters, for example, service name, uh, but we're simply gonna run a query and query means basically you make a global search. Now we see that a minute ago, our call has happened to uh, this, my awesome service, get roll dice and it has 16 spans under it. And this is a duration, so some metrics that we have too. If I expand this, I'm gonna see that um, in total, these are the spans that we're looking at and let's actually open it. So just like you saw on Datadog's page, we can see that my gateway is this one. It made some interesting calls under the query. So it used the middleware, then it initialized express. So these are like framework related calls. And then it made a call to service A, as you can see to the API. And then it also made a call to service B. So as you can see, these are my spans and I actually can click on this and trace it all the way back because I'm gonna have everything that I needed. For example, I'm going to have my parent span and I'm also going to have the span ID and I also have the trace ID, which is basically the same for all these requests. Now, of course, you can use something else for your UI. You don't have to use Zipkin. You can use something nicer like Elastic, maybe Datadog. You have many options. Some of them are paid. Some of them are not paid. All of that I'm going to be covering in the next video. So if you like this one, smash like, subscribe, obviously, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Goodbye.